born in Osami City, Philippines to Mr. Robin Revelo and Mrs. Leah Kainglet Obedenciu, who raised him as Seventh-day Adventist since he was five years old and later was baptized at 15. He was younger, he, he has one younger sibling, Levin, who lives with his family of four in Estancia, Iloilo, and married to a former Christy Eve Fitalbero. And they both have a Thailand-born 15-year-old son and a 13-year-old daughter. Having completed Bachelor of Arts in Theology at Mountain View College, Valencia, Philippines, and a Master of Arts in Religion in Old Testament at Adventist International Institute of Advanced Studies, that is AYAS, in Silang, Philippines. Pastor Rolly has a passion in doing a modern tent-making, self-supporting mission until his pastoral call by Thailand Adventist Mission from December 2014 until uh, December 2020. He pastored Trinity, Tonbori, Bangpra, Pattaya, Anthong, Singbori, Kachanabori, and Sukpanbori churches, while being the former Central Soon II secretary for five years of then 22 English speaking churches, which are now about 50, 30 plus in number. Presently, he is happily back in his passion in tent making by doing freelance bio, by vocational ministry through teaching science and computer at a government school and through doing business as mission online as a platform for evangelism while supporting pastoral and evangelistic work among the neighboring churches in his workplace in Ang Thong, that is in Thailand. He promotes New Start and integrative healing, especially from year in prayer radiation for the best antioxidant called melatonin during sunrise and before sunset, and from UV rays at noon time for vitamin D3 to boost our immune system. He also loves new and innovative challenges in doing mission with the local people as promoted by the Adventist Mission of General Conference. Since he loves preaching and teaching, Pastor Rolly is often invited by many churches, both local and international. No wonder he is speaking to us today on the subject assigned to him. Pastor Rolly believes that greatness is only by God's might, power, and spirit, and never by our own. He is a good friend of mine and a servant of God. Hence, let us welcome him with our undivided attention as he review the lesson study with us. Let's give him the time for Pastor Rolly Obedenciu. Good morning there. Good morning and happy Sabbath. Uh, Beverly is the church in Massachusetts. I hope you all can hear me there. Is it loud and clear? I'd like to know. Yes. All right, thank you. I would like to thank you for inviting me, especially Sister Bing Molo. Uh, I met her in our this morning here in, in Thailand. There is this uh, moment of meditation by my then roommate, Pastor Radner Rimo, uh, who is now in Taiwan. I also would like to thank everyone listening right there. I believe uh, Elder uh, Galang is there, and I can see some faces, somebody's of. Uh, uh, studying lesson, and I'm glad that somebody is studying a lesson. And I believe I only have about 30 minutes to review this lesson. You can see a lot of YouTube videos about the lesson. They are doing it for an hour, like summarizing everything in 30 minutes would be a big challenge for me this time. So what I need you uh, this time is to pray with me and for me as I review the lesson. Let us pray. Would your heavenly father at this time, it is Sabbath day there in Massachusetts. I am tasked. Uh, to review the lesson that you have given us so we will be able to extract the principles and we'll be able to apply them in our life today. I pray that all of us will be blessed and you'll illuminate with your Holy Spirit and that we'll be able to apply these principles, O oh Lord, in our specific daily life right now. Thank you for answering our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. I would like to give courtesy to the church pastor, the church elder of your church, uh, 
please don't take you know uh, literally any advice on screen uh, i would like you just in case you like to apply some specific principle to your life i would like you to consult with your elder or your pastor so that at the end of the day uh you will be uh, not blaming anybody but you'll be just yeah you cannot just take my word here on screen like oh pastor only talk about that for a specific application it has to be consulted with your pastor with the holy spirit and even using the tota scriptura principle of the scripture cannot just say oh this is the one situation of abraham and then it must be in my life take this principle from the whole scripture so that we will not get any mistake in in applying this lesson in our life wow uh right now this is a wonderful lesson about uh abraham you know and this already lesson six the roots of abraham for april uh, 32 may 6 and i would like you to focus on the lesson right here uh what i'm gonna do is i'll give you a short of explanation or review about it an overview and then at the end of it, we have enough time. I'll go into application. I, I don't know if there is enough time for interaction between you and me right here online. Uh, it seems to be like uh, there was no orientation about me giving such time for a uh, question and answer. Anyhow, I believe that you have reviewed the lesson already and studied it. And so let, let us go further. All right, now this lesson is uh, anchored in the key text which is found in Hebrews 11.8. By faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to the place which he would receive as an inheritance. And he went out not knowing where he was going. Look, if I could just focus more on the text, I think I can just summarize the whole lesson just only by the text alone. Like, how did Abraham obey God? It's by faith. Uh, what, where, where was he called for? What was, where was he going to? And he didn't know where to go. And why did he just trust God, you know, and uh, go out without knowing where to go? And if you go back to the text in Hebrews 11, 8, you will see in, in verse 10 that there is their specific answer to that question. For it means because he waited for the city which has foundations, whose builder and maker is God. In other words, he believed uh, in the builder of that city, and it is not made by anybody else. Like it's, a, it's just like, oh, the one calling me to go out, even I don't know where that is, is God Himself. Why should not I believe? Why should not I go out? Look, we go back to the text. Is let us understand that it that in in Genesis uh, twelve we understand that uh, in here when. When Abram was called by God, he was not alone. He was with his possession, with his, with his uh, about 300 plus men, 318. Uh, he was with his wife. What he left was his association with his, uh, his roots, his uh, relatives in there, his parents in there, uh, the influence that he got. That's why the, the lesson is titled The Roots of, of Abraham. It is interesting to know in which it is not asked in the lesson what, uh, what kind of roots of Abraham had before. Now, is, we would just understand throughout the whole week study by implication that the roots of Abraham was not actually in, in there very conducive for him to establish such a kind of faith. In fact, he was called by God to go out of such roots because... It was there already infested with idolatry and all those kinds of things that would endanger the fate of his life and even the fate of his family. So right now, this week, we'll be reviewing uh, of this topic on, on uh, the roots of Abraham. And this section will take us in the journey from Babel to the promised land, but with a new hero, Abraham, who, who leaves his home without knowing his destination, as I said. And then... Abraham's first steps toward the promised land are not easy, and, and, and rather he was hesitant to, do, to doing it a bit. Abraham struggles to inherit the land. For what reason? Well, we will see now for some detail. When he finally arrives in Canaan, there's a big <laughs> a challenge, and he cannot stay there. For what reason? Well, because of the famine. And he, therefore, must have to move to Egypt, and then when he was in Egypt, he cannot settle there because he had a conflict with Pharaoh because of what he did. We will know later on. Abraham is then obliged to turn back and he goes up to Canaan again. But even there, 
things becoming more complicated and Abraham and his nephew Lot, you know, uh, disagree for some time and they had to agree to, to be at peace with each other and settle a dispute. And then afterwards, a war break uh, broke uh, be, uh, that involves uh, the whole country, but then he just focused on a specific area where he, his nephew was there and solved and, and rescued him, the place that God has established, Abraham. And after that battle, Abraham is met by a stranger named Melchizedek, and it's a very, very, you know, uh, mysterious stranger. And we will see later on why he was that. And then he gave him the tithe, acknowledging that tithe belongs to, to, to him, belongs to God. Well, I want you to focus your attention for this uh, week's uh, lesson as I review it with the questions comparing Abraham's manipulations and lies with Pharaoh's trusts and honesty, you know, and also compare Abraham's selflessness toward Lot with, with Lot's selfishness and compare Abraham's generosity to the greed of the kings. And then let's analyze Abraham's incoherence of his uh, lack of trust, although he's called like the father of faith when he responds to God's call. Look, I, I'd like to emphasize more on the idea of this lesson. Uh, Mrs. White somewhere made some comment, you know, before God can use him, Abraham must be separated from his former associations, that he may not be controlled by human influence. The former associations means that was his roots, that he might be influenced by them, so he would rely on them, in them, instead of relying upon them, he would rely on God totally, all right? So, and by doing this, he can be more connected with God, right? Even though he's a stranger in the land that he was going to. And so his character must be peculiar, differing from all the world. And he could not even explain his course of action. And he even could not be understood by his friends, you know, uh, who were idolaters like, hey, Abraham, why were you going out? Look, why were you going out? And, a and a Abraham just, you know, demonstrated that he went out even without questioning God. Well, because he knew and he believed, as he was promised by God, for an inheritance. He didn't receive it according to Hebrews 11, but he believed, he saw it in his eyes, being a prophet, he saw it. And then such kind of faith was the one making Abraham, enabling Abraham to obey God without questioning. Well, was, was, was Abraham totally, you know, uh, consistent in his faith? You bet, he was not consistent in his faith. Now, that is an illustration that his life and his faith is a representative of our faith also. Although faith was his life motive in his life, it is not always consistent, right? Like a few times we fail also in our in our in our walk of faith. He was not perfect. And so let's study in this first step since exiting Kelia until the war of Canaan. We'll revisit the places where he built altars to worship God as his faith and trust in him were gradually growing. And we look at, uh, we try to imagine how Abraham's uh, travel, it would be like from the Ur of the Chaldeans in, and leaving for Canaan. And then he went down to Egypt. And then we would see that he went back to, to Canaan again. And then he, he had to re rescue Lot, his nephew. And then at the end of it, he thanked God. Well, while he was leaving for Canaan, we see in Genesis 12, 5, then Abraham took Sarai, his wife, and Lot, his brother's son, and all the possessions that they had gathered, and the people whom they had acquired in Haran, and they departed to go to the land of Canaan, so they came to the land of Canaan. Look at that. That verse 5 of Genesis 12 does not say that Abraham went out following God without question, being empty-handed. That verse 5 tells that Abraham was really loaded with people with him, with his possession, with his wife. It means that Abraham was going not alone, but he was a lot of people with him. Was he ready to go out? Well, if he was alone, it would be so scary for him. I don't know from human perspective. The point in there in Hebrews 11 by, by, by Paul was that it was an act of faith. Well, being having a large number of people with him is not really easy. You know, when you go, you know, became nomadic, being a stranger in the land, like changing from tent to tent. Well, it was so comfortable in his life back then in the land of Ur. Well, it was not really easy for him to do that until such when he arrived in Canaan, there was famine. Oh, how could I supply them? A lot of them, more than 300 of them. That is why the next uh, part of this lesson, we will see how 
Abraham resorted to his own decision making and then overcome by his weakness. Now, God ordered Abraham to leave this land and go to Canaan, all right? So he also promised him blessings. I mean, God promised him blessings, honor, and protection. What kind of blessings? Is it material blessings? The, the text does not indicate that it is material blessings. In fact, we saw in our lesson this week that it was a kind of a promise that God promised Adam and uh, Eve when, you know, uh, Genesis 3.15, that a seed will come out of, of the woman. And later on, such kind of promise was to be realized in the life of, of Abraham to be a blessing to the whole world through that seed. And that seed is actually is Christ. And in that way, we understand that it is just the same covenant that God made with Adam. It was just kind of renewed in the time of Abraham. But then God chose Abraham. For what reason? Maybe we think, well, because he is very, very faithful, full of faith. Well, maybe I cannot really fathom the, the mind of God why he would choose choose Abraham. At the end of the day, if it was for Abraham's faith, then Abraham would say, well, God, because of my faith, right? You chose me. And then it would not give honor to God and would not give God the, the, the prerogative to choose what he wanted to choose. And so it was not about all of that. We just question God when we go to heaven, like, God, why did you choose Abraham? Is it because of your servant, Paul, who, who gave the idea that because he was full of faith? Well, give it to God. And now understand, Abraham had to leave the land of Chaldea related to Babylon, like it was the land of the Babel, ba Babylonian, right? Shinar, and reach Canaan. And what happened there as we talk about it? That was a kind of a, in our lesson, lek leka, lek leka. Uh, well, uh, in, in my, uh, I, I tried it. I was a bit, I was a bit like, um, I should say, question the idea of lek leka, whether the author is really correct or not, because I had such capacity to do research on it. I mean, I checked my, 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 my Hebrew part in there, and I saw three of the literal translations yeah, indeed, lek leka. It was just a lek, and right away go to the from, you know, from 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 the land. But then from okay, uh, go out from your land. But then it's says lek leka in there is like a superfluous kind of a, an extra kind of a preposition to to yourself. Literally, go out for yourself. That is the idea there. Translated by three literal translations: LSV, SLT, and uh, YLT. They all confirm such. Uh, finding by the author of this lesson who is a Hebrew scholar. In other words, Abraham, go out for yourself and, and look, uh, find yourself in there. It's, it's a kind of a, a, a self-assessment on, on the part of Abraham to go out what was lacking in him that he needs to, what is in him that he needs to leave behind, a part of it he needs to leave behind. It was a kind of that spiritual, theological, exegetical idea that, that God was calling him to go out for himself, like kind of a finding his identity. And actually, from his roots, which is from Babylon, there were a lot of Babylon doctrines, a lot of idolatrous ideas before. Go out from that, Abraham. If we're going to apply it today, in a sense, although the part of my presentation, like the end of the lesson, will be more a presentation or illustration or application, there is a little application. Let me do it. We are also called by God to leave the Babylons in our life, the false doctrines in our life, the false beliefs in our life, the false association, the kind of things that would hinder our relationship with him, the kind of things that would get in the way between God and us for us to obey God's orders by accepting the salvation God offers to us. Leaving for Canaan is leaving all the Babylonian things, the confusion in our life that would confuse our relationship with God. Wonderful idea, brothers and sisters. And then when he was there going down to Egypt in Genesis 12, 10, now there was a famine in the land. And then Abraham went down to Egypt to dwell there for the famine was severe in the land. The question goes back to a lesson like, why did Abraham leave uh, Canaan? Well, you know, <laughs> Canaan uh, is the place where he was going to and God called him to go there. But when he went there, Oh, what was that promise? Lord, there was here no water or no food. And then there was this Egypt who was full of water, like a kind of a place flowing milk and honey, like everyone was really tempted to go from a human nature. Look, the first part of Abraham was that he responded to God by faith. But right now being panicking like, oh, over Abraham's faith was really, was, was really at this time, 
was challenged, you know. And according to our lesson, it was really designed by God that when he arrived in Canaan, Canaan would be in famine. So Abraham's faith would be tested. Instead of trusting God like what he did before, Abraham resorted to his human nature. And you know what happened? He was tempted to go to Egypt by his own volition, his own decision making, rather than you know, uh, consulting God whether he would go there or not. God, if he consulted God, God could do miracles if he wanted. But he didn't consult God. He went there and even made some white lies with his wife, like telling his wife, okay, you know, you're very beautiful. I want you to, to play a role with me and, uh, you know, make this very perfectly so we will not be in, da in danger and you will not endanger my life. Like, you know, when, when they see that you are so beautiful, the Egyptians would, you know, uh, take you from me and uh, make you a wife or probably would kill me. Well, in, in a sense, it worked. And in a sense, he is truthful a bit of it. Half only is truthful because uh, Abraham's wife is his sister, but not his sister. But actually, again, God overruled the situation because God cursed Pharaoh. And in a sense, also, his going to Egypt was a kind of a curse because it was not a blessing to the people there. It was not a blessing to his family. He was endangering also his wife. That's why Abraham was forced to go back to <laughs> Canaan. You see, the good thing about that story is that God gave the second chance, you know, to Abraham. Although he was not walking by faith at this time going to Egypt, God didn't punish Abraham at this time. It's just like, you know, uh, it's just like giving a chance to Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. God never left Abraham despite his lack of faith. That's the idea there. So Abraham deserved punishment, but God did not show such punishment. Instead, he overruled the situation because he's a promise to Abraham and then showed him grace. Friends, brothers and sisters there, God is giving us a second chance whenever we make some mistakes in our life. All right? Mistakes are very forgivable, but deliberate sinning done continuous, continuously until our life is ended until Jesus comes, that is very, very dangerous. In the Hebrew thinking, we call that rebellion, level, like Pisha in Hebrew, that is very dangerous. Most of the times, God would just kill anybody who would reach that level of sinning called rebellion, Pisha in Hebrew. But Awon is just like mistakes or because of our weaknesses, you know, and it's not deliberately done and not continuously, God can accept that. So we are so grateful to God for giving him and even us a second chance. That is grace. The same grace is available for us today, brothers and sisters. Now, when he was coming back to Canaan, in Genesis 13, 3, and he went on his journey from the south as far as Bethel to the place where his tent had been at the beginning between Bethel and I. You know what happened? God never left Abraham, as I said, but took his hand and brought him back to the starting point. He gave Abraham the chance to begin his journey again, this time with a new lesson learned. Now, at this time, look, Abraham no longer feared the, the, the famine or trusted himself. At this time, he had to trust God, and he learned trusting him. In fact, he built there an altar. He had understood that God would always be with him no matter what. Therefore, he let Lot choose first when conflict arose you know there was a conflict between him and, and and his nephew paradoxically lot chose freely but became a slave while abraham was free in the promised land that land was a gift from god abraham took it by faith god promises and god fulfills it brothers and sisters it's a very interesting thing if we compare the attitude between lot and, and Abraham, you know, when, when Abraham gave Lot his the freedom to choose, you choose first, being a senior citizen, Abraham should have all the right to choose whatever he wanted, but then out of courtesy, you know, being, he, he wanted to have a, a good rapport and relationship with his uh, nephew, and he, he doesn't want any, any trouble, he wants to be in harmony, to be at peace, well, nephew, Lot, you choose whatever you want, and I'll choose the, the left, well, Look, Lot chose the rich, you know, uh, city of Sodom and Gomorrah, and that city is filled with worldly promises and all those things that he wanted for his selfish desires and minding that it would endanger his family's spiritual, spirituality. But again, Abraham chose 
the later part, which is more of the mountainous area, not, not, not very comfortable place. But God came to Abraham again and he said, look, Abraham, look to the north, south, east and west. I will give everything to you. Like God was again confirming, affirming his promise that he would make Abraham a blessing of all nations. At this time, you can see the difference between the choices. In other words, brothers and sisters, let us be careful of our choices. Let us be careful of what we wish for. Like we want maybe have all these conveniences in life. I'm not saying that conveniences are bad. I'm just saying that for what purpose? Was it prompted by faith? When, when Lot chose the plains of Sodom and Gomorrah, it was not consulting God. He was, it was not a consultation with God. It was his own volition. It was unlike what prompted him like, oh, it's a very nice place. I like that without even consulting God. Look, it doesn't matter whether the place we, we chose is really nice or not nice. Like in the part of Abraham, it was not even you know, convenient, a nice place. Like, like Lot was very uh, a very good place. But the idea is, was it an act of faith or was it a selfish act coming out of ourselves without consulting God? That is the kind of thing that we need to go into it. Well, I, had, I wish I had more time, but let me finish this. And then, as you know, there was a, a, a kind of a war in that place uh, involving the whole country. And, and a Abraham had to rescue Lot, his nephew. We see in, in Genesis 14, 16. And so he brought back all the goods and also brought back his brother Lot, actually his nephew Lot, and his goods as well as the women and the people. But after serving Kedorlaomer and his allies for 12 years, the king of Sodom and his allies rebelled against him. And what happened? You know, this uh, Chaldeans uh, rebelled against, uh, I mean, the Canaanites rebelled against the Chaldeans. The main powers at the time were fighting for land and Abraham remained neutral. After all, he knew the land actually belonged to him because God had given it to him. And only when he found out that his nephew Lot had been captured, and then, according to Mrs. White's you know, a comment, seeking first of all divine counsel, this is what Abraham did. Seek counsel, divine counsel. Lot he didn't do that. Abraham prepared for war. Look, where we seven Adventists today, we have this position not to be involved in active war, but in in medics, you know, like uh, we would be in the, the medical area. But was, 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 is war evil or not? Well, we know it's evil, but look at this in the, in, the, in the time of Abraham, he had to do it. But when, before doing it, he had to consult with God. God, would you allow me to do this? I had to rescue. Would you like to rescue? Would you, whatever, any kind of consultation with God, as long as it is not his own, you know, a decision making. He consulted God for such. Thank God. Uh, he thanked God for such support. He rescued Lot with 318 men and uh, enough to rescue him and, and, and his family. And uh, well, to make the army flee to Damascus. And God was exalted about that. You see that rescuing. Uh, the people of Sodom and Gomorrah knew exactly who, who Abraham was. And this this, uh, I say, heathen people, idolatrous people, was just making fun of Abraham's faith. But then, at this time, when Abraham was able to rescue Lot, his God was glorified. You see, the influence now turning was glorifying to God. Well, friends, what lesson can we learn out of that? And then, at the end of the story, he met Melchizedek. It's a type of Christ. Melchizedek means... means uh, it, it, it means King Zedek like righteous. Uh, it is mysterious in there. Although some extra biblical sources like he is a son of uh, Methuselah in that lineage, but we don't see that in the scripture. In, instead, Paul, using the Old Testament available, you know, available resources, just said that it's a type of Christ without having beginning and no ending. And Jesus is the king of peace, like Melchizedek was. But it is not Christ exactly as it is uh, you know, told by the scripture. It's a type of Christ. He will soon return to bring peace to earth and to receive all who have trusted God and, and reached victory, and that is Christ. And in there, that Melchizedek priesthood predates Aaronic priesthood. And that is the kind of priesthood that Christ belongs to. Abraham showed his gratitude towards God by returning the tithe of everything he had given him. 
it was an example to others, becoming a witness of God in this time. Question would be like, how important is tithe giving to us today? As an act of faith. Do we do that today as an act of faith? Or is it because like a burden to us? That belongs to God. Well, more of that idea. Well, let me let me end this uh, discussion by uh, quoting Mrs. White's writings. The patriarch obeyed. He forsook his country, that is his roots, his home, his relatives, and all pleasant associations, that is his roots, connected with his early life and the thing in the past to become a pilgrim and a stranger. Well, it's not easy, uh, but I, I, I can read in the text and in, in uh, uh, Genesis 12, 5, that he was not alone going out. Actually, financially speaking, he was ready to go out, you know? Uh, for where to go, that one he didn't know, he was not ready for which place to go. But again, God wanted him to dissociate himself from his roots, his country, his own, his relative, his pleasant association, connected with his early life that was there in that place where it was very idolatrous. Abraham might have reasoned, God, why would you ask me to go to such place that I don't know? You didn't even tell me ahead of time. He could have questioned God, the purposes of God, but then he didn't do it. He obeyed God by faith. But he showed that he had perfect confidence that God was leading him because he saw at a distance the inheritance that God promised him. He did not question whether it was a fertile, pleasant country or whether or not he should have ease. He went at God's bidding. This is a lesson to every one of us. Brothers and sisters, I don't know how it applies to your life there in Massachusetts, but for my life right here in the land of smile, it would seem like a lot of OFW over Filipino workers. We come to find land for greener pasture. Well, my family came here as, as missionaries, so we came here for a different purpose. Although, well, a part of it was to be able to support the family because Paul is saying, God says through Paul, Anybody who does not support his family in 1 Timothy 5.18 is worse than an unbeliever. And so in that sense, it's really important while well, we are in the body. But then, was it an act of faith? That is the question of the day. Brothers and sisters, I think we have a little time left here. It's uh, on your part. It must be like 11.15. You're about to start. Now, I have to leave some questions of applications to all of you. And, and that may be dynamic. Uh, well, I would just say that before you apply this specific principle in our life, let us consider the tota scriptura principle and sola scriptura principle so that we will not make mistakes. All right? So the application could be like this. Like, like I go out, like what are some of the Babylonian confusion, you know, kind of things in our life that we need to leave behind? All right? When, when does this call mean for you today? How does God call to his people to get out, apply to you personally in relation to your social life, personal life, on, and anything that would you know, uh, relate to your character building? How does this expression apply to your life today? Go out for yourself. Go out, find yourself. What is a part of you that you need to leave behind? And you go out for yourself with God, not knowing where to go, but we know where we are going because we are uh, heaven bound and we are sojourners we are strangers in this land that we're going to heaven and then in the part of Lot we need to apply some application in here we need to question ourselves why was Abraham able to allow Lot to choose first well because he loved his cousin and then out of courtesy you know and uh, this selflessness so, and how does this attitude apply to your relationship with other people that is very important attitude attitude what is abraham's future oriented perspective superior to less uh, present oriented thinking and what principles and lessons does this story teach you about the way business should be conducted today it should be conducted in an honest way no deception and the one that represents god rather than what and how much you can get out of it why ultimately do crime and deception not pay well you know the story already well, regarding Melchizedek, it is a question of who is the Lord of your life. If you recognize that God is the Lord of your life because he is the source of everything according to Psalm 24, 1, and he owns even our money according to Haggai 2, 8, then give him his part. And that is a show of a recognition and acknowledgement that God is our Lord and not ourselves is the Lord of our life. I hope you will have more lessons of application for us today. And I wish I had more time to, uh, to interact with you. I don't know how much. Well, I see if there is something in here in the chat box uh, any question 
I didn't see any. Thank you so much. And uh, that ends our lesson review. Okay, uh, thank you so much, Pastor Rolly uh, Obedinjo for that wonderful uh, lesson review. And uh, is there any uh, interaction or any question that you can ask? Uh, Pastor Rolly is ready to answer. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Pastor. Thank you so much, Pastor.